This week's topic for the footballers out there is all about how to improve your lateral speed. I think some of the key ones for athletes listening in, of course, practice is key. So what does that mean? Make sure that you practice your footwork in isolation and you could just do that simply as part of an extended warm-up, especially drills like your fast feet, your your ladder drills, where you're really focusing on putting weight on your toes and um, doing short, quick steps. So they're not high intensity in terms of the speed that your body's going through and the ground contact forces that you're doing, like a sprinting and heavy change of directions, like a, a cut, 45 degree cut can have. So they're really good to add in as your warm up to get the body temperature up and get you moving and get your energy up. Um, but they're also good for your performance because when you're in those positions as a, a midfielder, like you're reading the boundary throw in, you want to be on your toes, on the move, and that way you can react sooner than your opponent. The next level up would be S bends and zigzag patterns. So here we're practicing on um, being able to flex from our ankle, knee, and hip and drive through the ground. Um, but we're not just moving in a linear fashion, you're actually moving at speed in a lateral fashion. So practicing particularly off that outside leg, being able to drive off and create that uh, S-bends as phase one. Once you're getting comfortable with that, being able to swivel your, your toes and your hips, you then you want to progress that to a zigzag where you're able to really stop, decel, practice your brakes, load the heels, and then have weight through your toes and be able to drive the ground away from you and focus on your first step putting good force into the ground. So you get that separation. Because typically on a footy field, we're fine. You do one step to get separation, two. And if you're lucky, you get space to be able to get three steps to get that breakaway speed. So practicing your first step, practicing your second, practicing your, your first three steps in isolation with little skill involvement is really, really important. Once you've got all those and your quick, your quick feet, then we want to practice that in specific contexts. For example, small-sided games. So being able to react to an opponent and use your footwork is key. So there's no point doing all these drills as a footballer and then not practicing high intensity with a football in your hands. So take the game on in training, make mistakes. Remember a mistake is only a mistake if you make it twice. So make sure that you're constantly putting yourself out there when you're doing the small sided games, if you want to improve your lateral speed and applying that in a drill, like a small sided game is the best way to not only improve your um, power, but also for you to be able to be able to read the um, opponent and pick which m movement you need to be able to go to. Do you cut to your left? Do you cut to your right? Um, what shapes to use? And then on the other side of the um, three key areas in the gym on how we can improve our lateral speed, our hips. So having pelvic stability is really, really important. So making sure that you're doing lots of hip lock work, not just in a sprinting upright posture, but also with your cutting work. Um, where we're getting a um, good amount of work moving onto the wall, for example, or moving onto a box, challenging your hip lock in that uh, frontal plane motion. So moving from side to side. And then the third one uh, pretty much is going to pop up everywhere, our core and trunk work. So making sure you're getting plenty of co-contraction work, challenge your trunk, um, particularly with your arms and legs moving. So your, your core can be able to maintain um, while your arms and legs are moving at speed, you have a maintain good abdominal um, posture. So long abs are when they're at their strongest rather than flexing forward. In terms of a power tip, don't let fear get in your way. Quick story on that. I actually bought this Rode podcast at well over eight years ago and never uh, had the courage to actually use it and, and build a podcast out. It wasn't until COVID where I was looking for something to do. And originally it, was, it wasn't even going to be a podcast. It was just live chats on Instagram until a few people recommended to turn into a podcast. So I would, uh, in hindsight, I wish I did the podcast a lot earlier. Um, so that's a big learning that I've got from this one. If there's something deep down that I really want to do and I've got a passion for, um, you shouldn't let fear get in your way. Give it a go. You, you might, you're going to make some mistakes, no doubt. And that's not a problem. You're going to learn from them. Like I said before, a mistake's only a mistake if you make it twice. So put yourself out there. Um, you're going to benefit from it from the long term. Definitely a believe, big believer in that. It's going to pay dividends. So don't let fear get in your way. 